Hi, and welcome to Commoner's Craft. This is part one of a three-part series where I'm going to show you you don't need expensive materials to make epic castle terrain. In the first video, I'm going to show you how to make castle walls that are modular, just like this. Let's take a look at how I made them. Like always, I start by cutting out the base of the walls from single corrugated cardboard. If you'd like to copy the exact walls that I made, you can use the dimensions you see here. The only part that is missing is the walkway because it really differs in size depending on the thickness of cardboard that you use. You'll see later what I mean. So keep cutting out all the parts you need to get the walls ready for assembly. Once you have all your pieces cut out, you can use paper tape to make assembly easier. I attach it to the sides and then trim it to size. When all the parts are attached, I test out if everything measures up and if it does, I use PVA glue in all the corners to glue it in place. For the walkway, like I mentioned before, I had no exact measurements for this, so I just trim it to size until it snugly fits inside and attach it to the piece. And now your wall should look like this. The base is ready and we can start enforcing it and adding details. Your construction is probably quite weak and bendy now, so I suggest adding some scrap cardboard cut to size to make it more sturdy. And now it should be a lot stronger. To make the battlement thicker, I'm going to use two layers of cardboard on the back and two in the front. The backing was easily measured by hand by holding a piece to the wall and drawing it on with a pencil. Just make sure you use thicker cardboard for this. Once they're cut out, you can glue them in place. The front piece had some arches in it and I didn't want to measure it out multiple times, so to save some time I made the template first. And again, once you have the parts cut out, you can glue them in place. You might have to trim it a little bit to make everything flush. I decided to try something I've never done before, and that is to cover the corrugation of the cardboard with some paper tape. I cut pieces to size and add them to the wall and then added some watered down PVA to firm it up and make sure it stays on. Now it's time to cover the corrugation on the bottom of the battlement and this was achieved by gluing 1cm strips of cardstock to the piece. I crunched up the arched pieces before gluing, it makes it easier to stay in place when I attach them. I do this with a combination of PVA glue and super glue. I wanted to add some extra detail to the arches, so I decided to add some smaller cardstock bricks in an arch before adding larger ones. 
this creates a lot of extra nice edges for dry brushing later. Don't forget to spread out the glue with a brush to prevent ugly parts. Now we're going to need a lot of cardstock bricks, so I suggest cutting out a lot in one go, so you don't have to go back and forth to keep making more. You could always use them later in another project if you make too much. This is the result I'm going for, and the size bricks I cut are 1.5 on 3 cm. My method of doing this is adding a line of glue, then lay out the bricks, spread out the glue, and then go to the next line. Once you get in the flow, it doesn't take too long, but it definitely is the most time-consuming step. So I suggest listening to some epic fantasy music to get hyped for your next game. Keeps the crafting motivation high. To fit the bricks in the arches, I just cut them to size after measuring it with a pencil. I was adding the bricks on the battlements, I thought it looked quite weird. So I decided to stop thinking and keep doing. Keep adding bricks everywhere, except for the walkway, I'm going to use a different size for that. The walkway was covered in 2.5 cm square bricks to calculate walking distance in D&D easier. I place the bricks in a way so there is some space in between them and I make sure to cover all the corrugation of the cardboard as well. Just like this. Now take a moment before painting to appreciate all your hard work, it feels good. I base coat everything using a cheap black acrylic paint. Make sure to thin it enough and use a damp brush to make painting it and all the nooks and crannies easier. layer is probably not enough, so add a second layer once the first is dry to get good coverage. Just like this. The first step is to dry brush the entire build with a medium grey. I mix black with white and then add a little bit of brown to make the color more warm. I use a large makeup brush for dry brushing, it's way faster and you get good results. It's a cheap one I bought for only 1 euro. Tend to cover a good part of the piece with this step, just make sure to leave the recesses black. In the next step I dry brush with a light grey color, this time with a smaller brush and focusing more on the higher edges and not the whole piece. This was used as well to add more definition to the bricks on the walkway to help separate them more visually. Quite glad I added the smaller bricks, looks very cool. To add some more interest to the piece I used the dark green color and dry brushed it on the bottom and all the corners like underneath the battlements, like a build up of moss. A 
As a last step, I used some brown wash as streaks of dirt or rain leaving stains on the wall. You could put more time and work into painting this piece if you'd like, but sometimes I don't feel like going all the way and this is definitely good enough for me. An optional last step is to clean up the edges of the side with black. This is always going to be put next to another piece so you won't see it, but it bothers me. And there we go, the walls are all done. For being made from trash material and not too much effort, I think these look quite nice. Of course, on their own it looks kinda out of place, so tune in next week if you want to see part 2 where I will make castle towers. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and if you did, make sure to subscribe. Take care.